Hello everyone. My name is Vishwajit Ray. I'm an assistant professor in the University of Alabama in Huntsville. So in this talk, I'll discuss about the data sanitization issues in the NAND flash storage. So primarily this work is done by my student Madhi Hassan, who has recently graduated. So I'm presenting on behalf of him. So this is the outline of my talk. I'll first discuss the motivation and the background necessary to follow this talk in the first part of this talk. In the second part, I'll show the experimental evaluation results. And finally, I'll show the new ideas for achieving page level instance data sanitization. Um, and we'll conclude this talk with future work. So let's get started. So NAND flash is ubiquitous in the consumer electronic space. Take your laptop, smartphone, or um, digital camera story, uh, the solid state storage devices, NAND is ubiquitously used. Now, unfortunately, the data deletion from the NAND flash is not straightforward. And hence, this, the user data still remains in the media long after the user deletion. So this provides a huge privacy threat. You can see from the Data Protection Act, of 2018, the data must be, um, data deletion must be real. That means it cannot be recovered in any way. Unfortunately, the none of the flash system offers the end user the capability to instantly sanitize the media. And this is a real threat. You can see the, in various news that the, that the sold uh, SSDs contains user data and some of those SSD has sanitization method in place, but still the data is recoverable that shows that it is a real privacy threat. So now a little bit background on the NAND flash system, how it stores information and all. So a NAND storage, as it's shown here with the internal of a SSD, has two important components. One is called the flash controller, which is a brain of the system. And other is the flash media chips, um, where the data is stored. Now the flash controller has various firmware modules which manages the flash uh, storage media. And flash controller actually de determines when the data is really deleted from the media. User has no control over it. And hence, there is a time lag between user deletion and the actual deletion of the data from the media. So now a little bit on uh, how flash stores information. So flash is a floating gate transistor. It stores information in the form of a charge on the floating gate. If there is charge, the cell is called program cell. It will have higher threshold voltage represented with logic zero. And if there is no charge on the floating gate, it is it will have lower threshold voltage and it represents logic one. So I sh here I show the threshold voltage distribution of the cells uh, which are programmed and which are erased. And that looks like a Gaussian distribution. This is a cartoon, but this is how the actual threshold representation looks like. So this is essentially an analog memory, but we get the digital information by applying a read reference voltage, which lies in between the two distribution. So the bottom line here is that NAND flash is a charge-based analog memory. And we'll show that it has a huge implication on the data recovery process. So why instant sanitization is a problem? We need to see the block level uh, circuit diagram of a NAND uh, storage. So this is this is the diagram and you can see the cells connected in a horizontal row They forms one page of, of this block. So now you can program or read data uh, in page by page level But you cannot delete data by page by page in a NAND system You can delete only by entire block a block level delete is allowed now This creates a huge problem for the NAND controller because in a NAND controller Suppose a block has certain valid pages and certain pages you would like to delete. So now in this case, the NAND controller has to rewrite all those valid pages to a new block before it can delete the old block. So that provides or that offer, that creates a hefty overhead for in terms of endurance, in terms of write amplification. And hence this block erase command is very sparingly used by the controller. And that's why there is a lag between user deletion and the actual deletion of the data. So the key point here is that there is no page level data deletion command offered by the NAND flash chips manufacturer, which is creating this problem. Okay, 
So now sanitization methods in the NAND system is an active area of research. There has been several methods proposed in the last few years. So the most commonly used method is this logical sanitization where the physical addresses of those pages that are going to be deleted are made invalid. And that's how the data is deleted. But you can see the data still remains in the media. Only they are not accessible by the digital interface because the physical addresses are invalid. So this is not secure, even though it is very convenient and very quick. The other class of method is based on encryption, where data is encrypted before it is written on the NAND array. Now there is a uh, key storage block, which will store the keys corresponding to the files. And you have to generate those keys securely, manage those keys securely. So this encryption based methods are suitable for high end NAND storage, which has enough resource, but for low end NAND storage having um, resource constraint platform, this encryption based methods are rarely used. The third class is based on um, overwrite based sanitization, where you can, uh, so since we cannot delete data page wise, the, but NAND controller can program the data to all zero state. So this is a very clever and interesting idea because this provides an alternative for page level data sanitization. Our research starts or basically questions this override based all zero uh, erase method. So, so this is how we start our research. We, we ask this question that is it really secure? Uh, this all zero override method. So this is uh, the digital representation of the data and the analog representation of the data. So since flash is analog memory, after a few days, the analog states will decay and the threshold voltage will change. But in terms of digital data, there is not much change. So after a few days, when you delete the data, you create new zeros. So now there is a distinction between new zero and the old original zeros. Because in terms of threshold voltage, the new zeros will have higher threshold voltage and old zeros will have less threshold voltage. Now the adversary can exploit this property to recover the data. So this is the threat model. We assume that adversary has physical access of the NAND chips and they can perform low level memory operation to recover the data. So in order to emulate this attack, we used uh, the NAND flash, commercially available NAND flash chips. And we use the TSOP socket to interface these flash chips with the computer through a USB interface. So this is our experimental setup to demonstrate this attack. So this brings to the second part of this talk that the experimental evolution. So now in order to recover the data, we need to uh, analyze the analog properties of the bits through system commands. So there is a method called read retry, which allows this end user to shift the read reference voltage. So by shifting the read reference voltage and bringing it between the uh, weak and strong zeros, we can re recover or, or, or we can uh, distinguish the strong and weak zeros. But unfortunately, SLC chips, most of the SLC chips do not have this feature. And even if this read retry feature is there in some of the chips, uh, MLC and other chips, the read reference voltage shift is very minimal. We cannot use this technique for this kind of uh, large voltage shift and distinguishing weak and strong zero. That's why we adopt this partially erase technique to recover the data. So in this technique, what we can do we can issue the erase command and we can terminate the erase command prematurely by issuing a reset command. So in this way, the distribution of the program state can be stopped in between before it goes to the erase state. And that can offer the opportunity to distinguish strong versus weak zeros. And that's what we'll show in the coming slides. So we start our data recovery process by writing an Einstein image as a representative data so this is the digital representation and the underlying analog representation is shown by threshold voltage distribution here. So after, um, so we bake this image to accelerate the data retention time. So we bake it for three hours. So after baking, the digital representation of the image does not change. When you read after bake, the digital data remains same, but we know that after baking, analog threshold voltage has been drifted down. So after that, we do all zero scrubbing to delete the, image and that's what we see that image is completely black that means everything is all zero and then we do a partial erase on this black image and we can still see or we can recover the Einstein image back so that's the re 
the real um, the actual demonstration or experimental demonstration on real um, flash chips so that data is recoverable even after all zero based sanitization so now this is the more results on on the recovery process so for in the recovery the key key parameter is the partial erase time so if we if we do erase or partially erase for a very limited amount of time nothing is erased so most of the data is not recoverable and if we erase for long enough time everything gets erased so there is a optimal partial erase time that will give the the, the best recovery efficiency and the second important part is the bake time so if we bake for longer duration then the separation between strong and weak zeros will be larger and that will offer higher bit accuracy but I would like to point out here is that that not all the bits are recoverable with this technique because there is overlap between strong zero and the weak zero distribution. And that's why with this technique, not everything can be recovered. So that brings to the, uh, the last part of this talk, the new ideas uh, to create, uh, to do analog sanitization. So the first idea is based on reprogramming all the bits to a higher threshold voltage. So, so in that way, we, the distinction between weak and strong zeros will be gone. But unfortunately, current chips will not support this feature because uh, the reprogramming to higher threshold voltage are not allowed in the current flash chips. The second idea is to, to, to create weak zeros. Instead of creating strong zeros, we can create weak zeros by partial program technique. So instead of full program, we can use partial program so that we can create weak zeros in order to match the original or old zeros. So page creation history will be important because we need to know how much this, the cells has been drifted down in terms of threshold voltage based on the page creation time. And using this information, we can control the partial program time so that we can create weak zeros which superimpose with the original zeros. In that way, recovery, in that way, uh, the adversary cannot recover the, the data. So I'd like to conclude this talk that we have shown that all zero override based technique has vulnerability. The adversary can exploit the analog properties to, to get back the original data. We have shown two different techniques to, uh, to achieve page level instant data sanitization. Uh, and one is based on uh, over programming and another is based on history dependent weak zero creation. So these are the future work we'd like to do so we have done demonstration mostly on um, SLC uh, NAND chips, but there are MLC, TLC, these are important class of NAND chips. We'd like to perform demonstration on them. We'd also like to perform demonstration on the 3D NAND, which is the future of NAND technology. And we'd also like to um, experimentally evaluate and uh, the robustness of the proposed ideas. So these are the future work. So with this, I would like to conclude this talk, or, and I would like to thank you and I'll be happy to take any questions if you have.